Thanks for tuning into the Weekly Wrap. I'm Jessica Ramir, a market analyst with Bell Direct. Well, the Aussie share market has had a volatile week, hitting a new three-month high on Wednesday on better-than-expected Australian and US economic data before swinging lower on Thursday and Friday with a second wave of COVID-19 emerging in the US and President Trump announcing he's kicking off his presidential campaign next week. Florida and Arizona reported spikes in hospitalizations, with Texas reporting three straight record high days of coronavirus hospitalizations as well, following Black Lives Matter protests. Now, Texas and these other states are now being scrutinized for reopening too soon. All factors combined saw volatility spike to a four-week high, with investors pushing for the risk-off button, which saw equities track lower for the first time in seven weeks, with the ASX 200 losing 3% from Monday to Friday as at midday today. Now, in a typical defensive fashion, investors sold down cyclicals, taking a 9% haircut off energy and 6% off real estate, while utilities, consumer staples and healthcare kept the market on the straight and narrow somewhat, helping the ASX 200 maintain its 27% gain off its bear market bottom. IPH clocked up 8% this week to $7.71 or thereabouts after announcing the purchase of an NZ business called Baldwin's Intellectual Property, which has already earned two million New Zealand dollars this year. Now, Bell Potter upgraded IPH's target to $8.70 and Macquarie held its bullish $9.60 target for IPH. Another standout was the gold business Saracen Minerals, SAR, shining 5% higher after the gold price rose 3%. Now that also helped St Barbara, SBM, rise 2%. Both Goldie stocks are backed by Goldman Sachs as buys. Now singling out Saracen Minerals, its first quarter production hit a record, also beating expectations. UBS maintained Saracen as a buy, rising its target to $5.35. Now according to Livewire's most read stories this week, Investors were keen to learn how to play defense with their portfolios. BetaShares reckons exposure to long-dated government debt and hybrids will provide a buffer against market shocks, suggesting ETFs like AGVT, CRED and HBRD. Another topic of interest this week has been where will gold go next? Now, the gold price is already up 30% this year, in US dollar terms, and one fund manager expects the gold price to sit at about 2.5K to 3,000 US dollars in about three years. Now this year, Evolution Mining, EVN, has already gained a massive 45%. Northern Star, NST, has clocked up 23%. So another way that you might like to invest in gold is via ETFs, such as QAU, GOLD and PM Gold. They're just some ideas. Now for two key themes I'd encourage you to think about next week. Well, the first one is the rise of online lockdown leisure. Now, NAB's research found that gambling spending rose 63% since the start of the year, with many taking the punt in their spare time during COVID. While internet and web broadcasting spending surged 42% with people subscribing to streaming services or updating their computer software. Now, a recent Deloitte survey found about 70% of people had at least one video streaming subscription, 40% had music subscriptions, 30% used a gaming service. Now, such digital trends will help transform the contact-free economy, and these trends will be difficult to reverse. Now, secondly, putting the magnifying glass on the rally. I'd encourage you to think about that. And if it's time to rebalance your portfolio or start periodically buying into the market. When you're a long-term investor like me, bring your growth and defensive assets back into alignment is so important as it positions you for an eventual recovery, improves longer-term returns, and decreases portfolio volatility. Let's say if your growth assets shrank in value with a fall in share values, 
and your defensive investments in utilities and staples and bonds rose in value, or you could take profits from the outperforming investments and then top up the lagging ones. Now lastly, consider some trading ideas. Well, firstly, with the rise of the online leisure industry, you might like to remember gambling payouts dropped in the GFC, but betting surged. So why would you gamble your money away when you're heading into a recession when you can invest it instead? Well, Aristocrat Leisure, A-double-L, is the gambling stock to watch. Now, with trading ideas in lockdown, it's backed as a buy by UBS, City, Bell Potter and Goldman Sachs. Now, Aristocrat's online casino revenue is tipped to charge after it rose 19% in the half year, helped by mobile gambling. Morgan Stanley targets $30, UBS targets $31.80. Other stocks to consider amid the rise of digital ledger include PointsBet, PBH, which is also a Bell Potter buy, and Jumbo Interactive, JIN, as well as Nine Entertainment, NEC, which owns Stan. Or you could look at other exposures such as the Chinese internet and tech giant Alibaba and WeChat and gaming giant Tencent. Now to access those, you could use an ETF called ASIA, Asia. And finally, this week we saw the Aussie dollar swing to an 11 month high against the US dollar on Wednesday and then fall 2.4% on Friday. So if you're investing in US shares, it's so important to consider how this is affecting your returns. Now currency risk can be mitigated with a hedged US ETF. The table here shows us the best returns for an unhedged US investment is seen when the Aussie dollar goes down against the US dollar and US markets go up. So if you believe the Aussie dollar will go up, you could invest in the hedged ETF IHVV. Or if you think the Aussie dollar will go down, you could invest in the unhedged ETF IVV. Our clients typically split their US investments across both as correctly predicting currency movements over the long term is very difficult to do. But whatever you do do, IHVV and IVV will get you exposure to some of the world's largest and well-known companies, including US giants like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google Parent, Alphabet, Facebook and Johnson & Johnson. On behalf of everyone here at Bell Direct, have a happy and safe weekend. I'm Jessica Amir. We'll see you next week.